motherfucking Wednesday. Always second in the door. Fuck you, Gummy. This is Amy. We're like best friends. I mean, we pretty much had no choice in the matter. We grew up on the same block, went to the same schools. Hell, we even shared the same comic shop. Plus, growing up, she knew how to play figures. That's a pretty important quality to have in the friend of any eight-year-old boy. Only you played figures like an eight-year-old girl. This is the Plum Tiger, World War II heroine. Plum is a medic whose superpower is that she's bound to a purple tiger. She uses her powers to rescue wounded GIs and take down Nazi scum. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't admire that, you know? This right here is her very first appearance in Kabang Comics, before she ever had her own run. After this story, she took off and had several spin-off comics. Needless to say, this comic is a treasure. Shh! Nobody needs to know that we don't have the cash. Listen, I'm gonna check out the new additions, you cover me, then I'll tell you what happens. This is Scrumpet and Booga. One can hardly introduce one without having to introduce the other. They were born on the same exact day, in the same exact hospital. And legend has it, at the same exact time. You're just jealous because we always had the better birthday parties. It's true. This is Lady Flip. This is our favorite comic, Lady Flip and the Incredible Mr. Lob. See, I wish sometimes that I was as strong as Lady Flip so that I could throw Booga at stuff. It's actually pretty funny to boot. Nobody cares about that, Booga. They just care about what I say. Yeah, I don't know either of them. This is Chris. He's the only one of us who is a nerd twice over. He likes comic books and sci-fi things, but he's also really smart. Watch this. Hey, Chris. Yes? Can you solve the Rubik's Cube? Yes. You see? And unlike any of us, he stays away from, like, weed and alcohol. He's in no way a burnout. That's because some of us have our priorities straight. Now, if you excuse me, I need to pick up 47 new comic issues and spend the day reading them in my basement. Sounds like a day to me. Aha. Uh -huh. Now this, this is a very special comic. Black Hole Force, number one. In 1985, comic book artist Christian Gebhardt created the Black Hole Force. And it didn't do well in 85 until the 90s when a movie of the comic was put out. Partially due to story, partially due to effects, that movie took off and this became a highly sought after collectible. Not only that, but because it wasn't popular at the time, they didn't make many of them. So this is really a prize. I was lucky enough to pick one up at a yard sale back in 88 for a quarter. It's one of the best thrifty finds of my life. Speaking of burnouts... What the hell is going on here? This isn't funny! Hey! Hey man! Open up! I know you're not close! I can see people in there! Pull it towards you, idiot! Is that you, Gully? Pull it towards you! Thank you, man! I thought it was closed! This unfortunate, this unfortunate's name is Edward. Told ya, my name be Kingston. AKA Kingston. Here in America, I give you evidence that you can in fact overdose on marijuana. He just grew dreadlocks one day, starting talking with that accent. But don't let his demeanor fool you. The boy's all about comic books. I think I lost my car keys. Did you walk here, Kingston? Oh yeah, that's right, I did. Thank you, my. This here is Sink. Sink may look like he's a real boy, but in actuality, he's really a robot. This is my favorite issue. In this one, Sink learns that he's not a real boy after all, but he's really a robot. And you know, sometimes I don't feel like a real boy.
So what I miss? Nothing. You're right on time. This is Will. He's kind of a brawler of a guy. But he also reads comic books. I guess that's why he felt the need to protect us from bullies in high school. Good thing too. You would have gotten your ass kicked a million times. Remember those five dudes I beat up for making fun of you? Dudes? Those dudes were like half our age. They were kids. Have you ever seen a T-Rex fend off velociraptors? Those fuckers are a little bit vicious. How dare you? Many people ask me why Captain Cannonballs is my favorite comic. He doesn't have any special powers. He's not even a hero. To them I say, Adventures on the high sea, treasure, pirates, ships, men walking the plank, <laughs> and especially half-naked pirate wenches, there's nothing better than that. This oddball is Emily. No one really knows when or how he started hanging out with our group, but he is one resourceful guy. I mean, any comic, any issue, if you have the money, he'll get it for you. He comes here every Wednesday and buys one of every comic that comes out. Rumor has it, his basement contains more comics than a Comic-Con. It's a proven fact. Screw Purple Dames and Robotic Boys. I have here the best thing you'll ever find in a comic shop, Hell Demon. It's the most controversial comic ever written. It's been attributed to over two dozen suicides, and it's as infamous as the Necronomicon. Just holding it, I could feel its power from hell. And thus begins our Wednesdays, as they have for many years. This? This is only the reason I became a fanboy. It's Captain Industrial. Some of you might not recognize the overhaul he got in the 90s. He was popular in the 40s and 50s. But this here was a run that happened in the 90s. This happens to be Captain Industrial number two, The Conflict of Nemesar. What's strange about this comic? Only the fact that here's a nemesis who would actually kill Captain Industrial. Nobody expect the Iron Mistress to do it in the 50s. She loved the Captain almost as much as me. The only problem is, this isn't my copy. None of these comics belong to us. All my comics were sold to comic jerks in the mall by my ex-girlfriend, Gwen. Idiot. Then they were sold to an auction house. How can I reread Sync now? And the auction house? Well, they sold them to the highest bidder. What kind of animal would do such a thing? Tell them. A crazy bitch, that's who. A selfless shell. A tin droid. A heart, black hearted. There, there. Black heart? <laughs> that's adorable. Comics are for children. Besides, Gully owe me money. Now he owes me a little less. I wasn't gonna get it any other way. Did you know he's an online comic book salesman? <laughs> I mean, is that even a real thing? It is. Look, we could buy all new comics. Only then, they wouldn't be our comics. Our comics, with the offers cut out. Our comics, with the coffee stains and the greasy fingerprints. Our comics, that we collected from childhood to adulthood. Comics that make us feel like a real robot boy. Our comic. I got this. Of course. Our comics that we came to buy faithfully every Wednesday. Our comics. But you see, we've got a secret weapon. We've got Emily. And Emily has a copy of the master list of who bought what comics. Armed with that intel, we're gonna go get our comics back. Right. I'd rather watch soap operas from the 70s. Only a real nerd will want to watch a bunch of other nerds doing nerd things. Oh, she is such a... God! <laughs> <laughs>